I loved Kakashi in part one of Naruto. The concept of him being a copycat ninja always stuck with me, and I wish I got to see more of that. So today, I decided I would give Naruto those abilities and see how this story plays out. So, if you go on to enjoy this video at any point, please consider smashing that like button and leaving a comment to help this video do so much better in the algorithm. That said, enjoy. Naruto, Naruto, wake up. Huh? What? Naruto would say as he looks up and looks to see the class laughing at him. As he says, shut up, and would walk to the front of the class trying to perform the Shadow Clone Jutsu, but he would fail once again and be told he's not going to be graduating from the academy. And this would crush Naruto, but Mizuki would walk up to Naruto and say, hey Naruto, I know performing Jutsus isn't your thing, so there's another way you can become a Genin. Really? Naruto would say, as Mizuki looks at him and says he wouldn't lie, crossing his fingers behind himself, as he then tells Naruto about stealing the scroll of sealing, and then bringing it to him by the forest. And just like in canon, Naruto would do it. So after a couple of hours pass, Naruto would meet Mizuki in the forest, telling him he did it, as Mizuki would laugh, screaming out, You fool! As out of nowhere, Iruka jumps in the way, as Mizuki would throw a large shuriken in his direction, and Iruka would take Naruto's place. As from here, Naruto would stare at Iruka in bewilderment, before asking, why would you do that, sensei? As Iruka yells out, go Naruto, he can't have the scroll. As he would try to hold Mizuki off like in the original story, and eventually we would get the iconic speech Iruka gives about Naruto, saying he values Naruto and doesn't hate him, bringing Naruto to tears of joy, knowing someone actually cares for him. As he unlocks the Katsugan, which gives Naruto the ability to mimic anything he sees, as well as an ability super similar to observation hockey from One Piece, where he can see one second into the future and predict his opponent's movements. After this happens, Naruto immediately jumps in the way of Iruka, defending him from Mizuki, busting out the multi shadow clone jutsu, absolutely stomping, bro. As Iruka then realizes that Naruto's eyes changed as he unlocked his clan's dojutsu. So he'd be taken to Haruzen's office where Naruto would learn about his clan's history and how he's the last Uzumaki alive from what Hiruza knows. After learning all this, Naruto would be shocked and on this very night would also ask about why he was never told about the QB situation. So that would be explained as well and Naruto would go home where he would process all this information only for the next day to come around and him to try to show off his dojutsu to the class. But Naruto wouldn't be able to activate it at will, so people would make fun of him, but eventually at the end of the day, Naruto would activate it with Sasuke and Sakura being the only ones in the classroom, who would be absolutely stunned, until finally, Kakashi would arrive and see Naruto's dojutsu, leading him to telling Naruto to stay after he basically talks to the team. As from here, Kakashi goes on to inform them of the bell test and would ask Naruto if he knows how to control his dojutsu, with Naruto saying, no. He doesn't. So Kakashi tells Naruto if he passes tomorrow, he'll teach him a couple of things about controlling a dojutsu, as he would body flicker away and Naruto would wait anxiously for the next day, as Naruto would be there right on time and he would wait for an entire 3 hours as Kakashi, like you would expect, would arrive late. Because of this, obviously Sakura, Naruto, and Sasuke would be angry at him, but he'd start the bell test regardless, and because Naruto doesn't have anything at his disposal that could make him get the bells at this point, he still loses and gets tied to the stump, but realizes one thing, he was able to see Kakashi hit him before he actually landed the blows, which Naruto would take massive note of and then realize that he can see into the future, but he can't do anything to change it. If only he was fast enough to actually dodge those attacks, Naruto would think as he would be tied to the stump and eventually the rest of the team would have lunch and they would pass just like they do in canon because obviously Sasuke would feel, feed, um, feed Naruto, right? Because of this, when Sakura and Sasuke would end up leaving after the test, Kakashi would tell Naruto that he needs to stay behind and would go on to tell him what he knows about his own genjutsu. As Naruto would learn a couple of things about the Sharingan and how it's not so different from the Genjutsu, or sorry, not Genjutsu, but Dojutsu that Naruto now has access to. Naruto from here would then be asked by Kakashi what he knows about it, and Naruto would say that only thing he really knows is that he sort of saw into the future. As from here, Kakashi would say, Good, at least you're picking up a couple of things, but that's not all, Naruto. 
You know Jutsu gives you the ability to predict the future in a battle, and takes the Sharingan's ability to copy Jutsu to a whole nother level. While me with the Sharingan, I still have to work at learning these Jutsus. You practically get to just copy and paste them. And Naruto would stare at Kakashi asking what he means. As Kakashi goes on to explain that with his Sharingan, he was able to learn over a thousand Jutsus using just one eye. And Naruto's eye, eyes, sorry not eye, but eyes, are even more potent than his when it comes to copying Jutsu. Naruto in this moment would be stunned, asking if he can really do that. And Kakashi would say, you will do that. As Naruto would then be given a piece of paper by Kakashi, which would basically be the little chakra paper where like they can channel their stuff in. And Naruto would do so, learning that he has wind nature chakra, with Kakashi showing him the wind bullet jutsu, trying to see if Naruto can mimic it immediately. Which Naruto realized, which Naruto upon watching Kakashi do the jutsu, realizes one thing. And that's that when Kakashi was performing this jutsu, Naruto almost saw it in slow motion, and it would be engraved in his memories, almost in his body, like it's a reflex he already knows. And almost like he would know the jutsu immediately, Naruto would perform the jutsu. However, because Naruto has absolutely garbage chakra control, it would be a massive wind bullet that would destroy a tree, mind you, but it would also have insane recoil, sending Naruto flying back. Think of like a little kid if he was to shoot a shotgun. That's how bad the recoil was because Naruto's wind bullet was like four times the size of Kakashi's. And Kakashi would have taken note of that, telling him that he needs to work on his chakra control if he's going to be using his dojutsu properly. So Naruto would work on his chakra control over the course of the next two weeks while Team 7 does Dean Rake missions and would begin to get the hang of it when it comes to, um, or sorry, uh, over the course of the next two weeks. Naruto would go on those missions, but while he does that, he also begins working on his chakra training and stuff like that, meaning that he gets a lot better when it comes to molding chakra, finding it a lot easier to use high chakra jutsus, since Naruto realizes that higher chakra jutsus are a lot easier to control. And so, Naruto would just be getting stronger and stronger every single day, eventually leading us to the Land of the Waves mission, where specifically we're going to be jumping straight to when they encounter the Demon Brothers. This time around, Naruto won't be scared. In fact, he reacts by weaving the ninja's blow and kicking him back, giving Kakashi time to knock them out, as this time, there would be no scaredy cat scene, and Sasuke sees that Naruto might not be as weak as he thought, and after this, they continue, eventually running into Zabuza, as Kakashi vs Zabuza would go down, and eventually Sasuke and Naruto would have to save Kakashi, which they do just like in canon, but this time around, every time Zabuza performed the water jutsu, it would be engraved in Naruto's memory and would be instantly added to Naruto's new arsenal of jutsus, especially the water dragon jutsu. So after Zabuza's defeat, they head to Tazuna's house, where they would train for a couple of days before Kakashi would wake up, and when he does so, he would wake up and teach them tree walking, which would be a lot easier for Naruto to do because he's getting the hang of chakra control way faster. So he beats Sasuke, and after this, Naruto continues training vigorously every day, as one day, he ends up passing out in the forest where he meets Haku like in canon, having their convo, and eventually the day rolls around where Naruto oversleeps, so he would actually be there protecting Nari and Tsunami from the goons just like he would in the original. But after he does so, he realizes that his team must be in danger. So he would rush to the bridge after realizing that, and he would rush in so fast, not really understanding the situation, but just seeing Sasuke trapped inside of some weird ice mirror jutsu. As Naruto rushes in, where just like in canon, they would be bombarded with Senbon, and Naruto would try to beat Haku using shadow clones and water clones, just like he would in the original, obviously not water clones, but you get my point, since he would have copied that from Zabuza, but it wouldn't work. And eventually, through this, Sasuke would end up unlocking his dojutsu, making it easier for the both of them to dodge. But Naruto, even though he knows the Senbon are coming, he can't dodge out of the way because he's still not fast enough. Keep in mind, Sasuke is the fastest one out of all of them at this point, and that's not going to be changing. So once Haku would get serious and throw a ton of Senbon at Naruto's body, Naruto would have no answer to Haku's attack. And just like in canon, Sasuke would jump in the way, saving Naruto, leading Naruto to go out in a moment of rage and punch Haku, literally punch him out of the mirror jutsu, where he would then rush him, going on to perform a water dragon jutsu that would completely knock Haku out. 
because it would be three times bigger than the one that Kakashi and Zabuza used. And after this, Naruto turns to Zabuza ready to rage out on him. But it would be in this moment that Gato and his men would arrive, and so Naruto would roar out at them, creating another giant water dragon jutsu before then passing out and shooting it at all of Gato's men, defeating them. Meaning Zabuza and Haku, they get to see another day. And who knows if I might do something with them in the future. Wink, wink. Anyways, after the mission would be completed, Naruto and the gang would head back to Konoha, where they are informed of the Chunin exams as well as receive their reward for the mission. And because of this, we skip to the Chunin exams right when Lee challenges Sasuke to a fight. And just like you might expect, Sasuke gets absolutely clapped. But remember, Naruto's watching all of this and taking notes of Lee's fighting style, realizing he would actually end up copying Lee's style without even trying. So Naruto would want to test it out, but would have to wait until the forest of death section, which we're going to jump right into, considering every other event would stay the same. And once in the forest, Naruto would turn to Sasuke, asking him if he would want to spar with him for a moment, as he wants to try something out. But Sasuke would laugh at him, mocking him, saying, if he really wants to lose. As Naruto smirks and says, do you? Staring back at Sasuke, as his dojutsu would be active, and Sasuke would look at Naruto, saying, don't test me, Naruto, activating his Sharingan, as Naruto's eyes, as he's staring at Sasuke and they're both like, like staring each other off, Naruto's eyes would begin to shift to that of the Sharingan, staring back at Sasuke, who would be absolutely flabbergasted at the change in front of him, asking Naruto how in the world he did that, with Naruto being confused at what he's talking about, until Naruto realizes he must have copied his Kiki Ginkai, as Sasuke says, it's nothing but a cheap copy, and he's gonna prove that right now, getting ready to throw a blow, but it would be in this moment that they would both pause, realizing that there's a massive chakra signature heading their way, and immediately the both of them would get on guard, as Orochimaru would arrive, stopping their fight, and they would stare at him in fear, as Orochimaru would see two people with Sharingan in front of him, as he asks how both of them have that ability, and Sasuke speaks up saying, Naruto just a cheap copy, he's the real deal, rushing in as bro gets instantly sent flying back and naruto rushes in as well using lee's taijutsu shocking orochimaru who deflects every attack and shoots a snake jutsu at naruto which naruto weaves hand signs for simultaneously shooting the attack back at orochimaru who realizes he must have the uzumaki dojutsu that was destroyed when their whole clan was wiped out and would immediately stop playing games giving the both of them the curse mark knocking them out and leaving sakura to take care of them as he left as he leaves sakura with a chilling final message he'll be back as everything from here goes just like it does in canon because even though naruto gets the curse mark the QB's healing property is counteracted, so it removes the curse mark from Naruto, so we're able to jump straight into the 1v1 fights. Actually, before I say that, I definitely do want to mention one thing. Orochimaru doesn't uh, try to use Karin to get the dojutsu because I'm going to remove her from the story. I want Naruto to genuinely be the only Uzumaki left, and that's why Orochimaru has no other choice but to actually try to go after Naruto this time around, right? But anyways, jumping back to what I was saying, the 1v1 fights. It would be at this point that we would cut to like a, what, like a two day skip where they're kind of like back at the base and Sasuke would be treated from the curse mark by Kakashi. And eventually we would get to the 1v1 fights where, um, let's see, where Neji and Hinata's battle would actually take place before Naruto and Kiba's. So Naruto watches as Neji and Hinata fight and sees their gentle fist styles as well as their Byakugan in action. So as the battle goes on, Naruto would copy their abilities as well as their dojutsu. And after the battle would be over, Naruto would promise to defeat Neji no matter what to get, his, to get Hinata's get back. And so, when his battle comes up versus Kiba, Naruto wouldn't play around at all, as he would mimic Neji's fighting style without the Byakugan, like he doesn't activate it, and would absolutely destroy Kiba with Neji's Taijutsu alone. As he would ask, Nar uh, or sorry, Naruto would look up at Neji who would be in the stands and ask him to rate his Taijutsu, with Neji screaming out, How dare you disrespect the gentle fist! With Naruto replying, Struck a nerve, did I? As he tries to rush Naruto, but Mike Guy would hold him back and say there's gonna be time for that later, with Naruto smirking as he would walk off. After this, 
Naruto would begin his one month training period, in which he would train on his own, working on nothing but his body for speed and strength, until eventually, Jiraiya would approach Naruto and would train him over the course of the rest of the time that he has left, meaning Naruto is able to learn a plethora of Jiraiya's jutsus, as well as his fighting style and would work on his newly acquired dojutsus, so by the end of it, Naruto would begin looking more and more like a once in a billion prodigy, and by the end of the month, Naruto would be more than ready to fight Neji, right, and beat him at his own game. Naruto not only is going to try to stomp him, but he's going to try to stomp him with his own moves. And for those of you out there who watch my channel and also play basketball, that's like one of you wanting your friend and he's able to beat you while using your own moves. Like the moves you like to use, like me personally, I like to use a lot of mid ranges. That'd be like if my friend just did the step back middies on me just the whole game. I would... I would feel personally disrespected, and that's exactly what Naruto was trying to do to him. And eventually, the day would arrive where Naruto would stare daggers at Neji, asking him if he's ready to be embarrassed in front of everyone, making Neji scowl as eventually the proctor would say Hajime, which means go or begin or whatever, right? And Naruto activates his Byakugan, shocking Neji as he would catch him off guard and land 16 blows to Neji with a perfect mind you, absolutely perfect gentle fist technique. Shocking Asashi, who would be in the stands, as from here, Naruto and Neji would go blow for blow, and Naruto would return every single hit that Neji would land, but not only that, but he would return it harder and faster. Eventually though, Neji would jump back in panic and begin using the rotation jutsu, but Naruto, because he still didn't know that ability, finally would copy it and would copy the jutsu, showing off that he can do it as well, as he would then ask him to try a little harder, saying that this is the prodigy that all these people came here to see. You, I learned in one day what took you years to do. As from here, Neji hearing all this would get enraged and he would rush at Naruto trying to land the 64 palm jutsu. But Naruto seeing into the future and seeing that Neji was about to land that blow, like literally just a second Neji was about to, like Neji got into the stand and was about to land those blows, Naruto would beat him to the punch and he would watch as Neji was about to like try hitting him. So Naruto would just assume, okay, he's about to hit me. He said 64 palm jutsu in the one second ahead. So he literally copies that and would proceed to hit Neji with his own attack before he could even start it. Landing eight trigram, 64 palms, landing every single blow on Neji. As Neji would fall to the ground unconscious and everyone stares in complete shock. As Naruto from here says, pathetic and walks away leaving the crowd in silence and giving Orochimaru a new target. Because why have one dojutsu when you can have them all? So he would try to go after Naruto primarily in this timeline, and Sasuke is going to be more of a second option if all else fails, right? But eventually, we would get the Sasuke versus Gara fight, and this battle goes just how you remember it until Naruto begins to take chase after Sasuke, because originally, Tamari and Konkuro would try to stop Naruto at this point, and Shikamaru and Shino would be the ones to step in and save Naruto, so Sasuke can actually get backed up by Naruto. But this time around, Naruto completely disregards them both by blowing by them. But come on now, I think we all know deep down, this timeline's Naruto is going to be doing that, but the way that he does it is the kicker, as Naruto would not only destroy them both, but he would do it using Gara sand attacks, creating constructs of sand to absolutely mess with their heads, and then he would rush towards Sasuke, where he would create a wall of sand in between Sasuke and Gara, as they would be about to land like they're finishing blows on each other, but he would be able to grab Sasuke, who would literally have been right about to get knocked out, and ask him what in the world he thinks he's doing, with Sasuke turning to Naruto curse mark activated and yelling at him, telling Naruto to get lost. But Naruto would tell Sasuke to calm down, and since Sasuke wouldn't do so and would actually try to fight Naruto, Naruto would be forced to create a massive dome of sand around Sasuke, trapping him inside of it, as he would then turn to Gara and tell him, this is gonna be fun. Immediately, Naruto then would rush at Gara and shoot sand attacks at Gara that Gara would counter, but he would do so in such an animalistic fighting style that would actually make things super interesting. 
but with Naruto having his future sight and speed, he's able to dodge Gara's attack and keep up, actually making Gara believe he's in a genjutsu because of how badly Naruto would actually be playing with his food. But ultimately, Naruto then goes on to whisper under his breath, I hope this works, as he would slam his foot down and while one hand would be shooting a sand attack, the other foot would literally just be freezing the ground, freezing Gara in place just long enough for him to be able to shoot a sand dragon at Gara, knocking him out as he would stand over Gara and say, that's for Lee, spitting on Gara's unconscious body and beginning to walk away. But as he would do so, Shukaku would wake up and the sand would begin to cluster up, creating a massive kaiju Shukaku form. As Naruto would stare at it and would be so glad, Shukaku's made of sand. As he would immediately begin moving his hand and he would stop Shukaku's movements by simply manipulating his sand body and ultimately treating Shukaku like some sort of plaything. As eventually, Naruto would get bored of this and would disperse Shukaku with one hand as he squeezes it together and he would then go over towards the conscious Gara as he would lift all five of his fingers in the air and little flames would appear on all of them as he would use the five prong seal on Gara, making the seal so much tighter on Gara considering Jiraiya um, in the original used it on him when uh, to like uh, tighten the seal once he like he found out about that stuff and because Orochimaru like didn't uh, necessarily like tighten it in the forest or anything like that the seal's like a little weaker than it would have been in the original so now Jiraiya had to tighten it and Naruto watched uh, what he did with his hand before he placed it on his stomach so Naruto knows how to make the jutsu um, and so with that he would like place his hand on Gara's belly making the seal way stronger and um, like after that like he would make it so Gara doesn't have to deal with Shukaku all the time so yeah after this though um, Naruto would release the sand dome that he trapped Sasuke in right only for Sasuke to actually be enraged at this and would rush at Naruto trying to fight him but since Sasuke is already low on chakra and the curse mark is eating at it uh, at the little chakra he has left Sasuke gets absolutely dismantled by Naruto who would use his sand to bind him in place as he would knock Sasuke out and tell Kakashi that they 100% need to do something about Sasuke that he's losing himself so once Sasuke would wake up, Kakashi would actually give him the Tak no Jutsu that he would have given him in canon way earlier than in the original, and it would sort of work, considering Itachi hasn't added fuel to the fire yet by reminding him of what happened that night. So Sasuke would be okay for a while, while Naruto on the other hand would be with Jiraiya searching for Tsunade, and eventually, he would find himself in a hotel room, waiting for Jiraiya to be done with his usual <clears throat> research while Naruto would be waiting and would eventually hear a knock at the door. Feeling super lazy, Naruto would activate his Byakugan to see who it is, only for him to see Itachi and Kisame wearing cloud robes, immediately realizing something's up as he would get serious and immediately create a shadow clone as he would make it go for Jiraiya and call him for backup since he knows things are about to get serious. He can feel the chakra signatures coming off of them. They're massive. And so, he would then turn to the door, seeing Kisame straight up cut it in half, as Kisame and Itachi would stare at Naruto. With Naruto seeing Itachi's eyes as immediately, Naruto's eyes would shift to, the, to that of Itachi's Sharingan as well, shocking Kisame and Itachi, as Kisame would say, That's a neat trick, kid, but you're gonna need more than that to beat us. As from here, Naruto would immediately look at them as he then would go on to create 20 shadow clones that Kisame himself would rush in at, destroying them immediately. With Naruto watching as Kisame would swing his blade and realizing that there's not a lot of copying he's going to be able to do when it comes to this guy. So he would jump back before then Kisame would rush at him, swinging his blade at Naruto as Naruto in like movie-esque fashion would slide underneath the blade by like sliding with his knees on the ground, being right under Kisame as he would begin getting ready to give him an uppercut Rasengan, but as the Rasengan would land, Kisame would turn into water as Kisame would attack him from behind, but then Naruto using his future sight, seeing that this was about to happen, would then turn into water himself as Kisame would land the blow and he would appear behind him using his gentle fist to actually slam Kisame in the back sending him flying back as in this moment Kisame would turn back and smile at him 
as he would then go on to shoot a uh, a wind bullet at Kisame point blank that would actually almost hit Kisame had it not been for him swinging his blade in the air. In this moment, Itachi would then say, stop playing around Kisame, as he would get ready to attack Naruto when all of a sudden, Sasuke would actually arrive in the battlefield, screaming, ITACHI! As he would charge in with the Chidori activated, as Itachi would straight up bully his younger brother, causing him to relive the tragedy of that night over and over again, using the Suki Yomi. As while this would all be happening, Naruto would be about to get serious with Kisame when suddenly Jirai would actually end up arriving. Using the Toad Mouth Jutsu, he would immediately trap all of them there and take Sasuke's body and put it right behind himself. In this moment, just like in the original story, Itachi and Kisame would have a bit of banter before then Itachi would use his Amaterasu to burn a hole open for them to be able to retreat. As after this, eventually Naruto and Jirai would talk things over for just a bit as eventually Mike Guy would end up arriving, grabbing Sasuke's body and taking him back to the village since obviously he got put under Tsukiyomi and now he has to deal with the after effects of this. And then Naruto and uh, Jirai are just left sitting there as Naruto would say they were strong and he would say had he not arrived he probably might have died to Itachi saying that he had no idea how strong it's, uh, Sasuke's brother was, as Jiraiya would look at Naruto and say, yeah, they're two monsters, as in this moment, Naruto would then say, I picked, I picked up a neat trick though, as Jiraiya would turn to Naruto, and Naruto in this moment would shoot his Amaterasu flame straight toward the dire direction of a vase, as it would burn up, and Naruto would realize the flame wouldn't go out. So Naruto would immediately create a shadow clone as that shadow clone would run outside holding on to the uh like the vase by a part that is not burning and he just throws it on the ground as the flame literally just stays there like it's just the the flames are just blazing just as the toad mouth jutsu would be right and after this happens Jiraiya would say neat trick they continue their search and eventually just like in canon, they would end up finding Tsunade, however, she would be drunk in a bar, lost in a bottle, and Jiraiya would try to snap some sense into her, but there'd be nothing coming out of it. So Naruto, who'd be watching this entire thing go on for the past 20 minutes, would say, It's a shame, Asani's fallen so low, not even Orochimaru's this pathetic. And hearing this, it would immediately strike a nerve in Tsunade, as she would slam her hand on the table and ask Naruto to repeat that, to which Naruto does, and as soon as she hears that, she'd be about to attack him, until he says, How about this? We fight. If you win, I have to come back to the village. If you win, well, that's for you to decide. And Tsunade in this moment has straight up murder on her mind, so Jiraiya himself would even be scared at the aura that she's given off, but the second that this battle would begin, Naruto would use a mist jutsu, courtesy of Zabuza, as he would then blitz behind her, and she would surprisingly be able to uh, like sense Naruto doing what he was doing. She would go over to punch him, and she would straight destroy the ground. However, Naruto would have been able to evade her by using sand to like create a barrier in front of him, as like she literally broke the sand and the ground. And immediately, Naruto would create a sand fist as it would punch her up into the air with so much force she would stay up there for a bit. And immediately, Naruto would shoot a water dragon at her, which she would punch away in the air as she would land on the ground and like her like in a superhero fashion. But she would begin like tumbling over since, you know, she's under the influence. And in this moment, Naruto rushes her, about to land an attack as she would punch at Naruto, causing him to turn into sand since it wasn't the real one, and he would appear right behind her, landing a Rasengan point blank at her uh, vital area, considering Naruto would have had the Byakugan active in one eye at that moment. And with this, Naruto would just stand over Tsunade who was completely unconscious, with Lady Shizune or whatever going over to Tsunade and taking care of her for the night. After this happens, we end up skipping forward to the following day, in which the battle against Orochimaru would go down, however this time, it's not just gonna be Tsunade and Jiraiya versus Orochimaru, but Naruto as well, since he would easily be able to piece up Kabuto so unbelievably fast. I mean seriously, 
Naruto would straight up use the gentle fist in tandem with his future sight to stomp Kabuto out and not let him land a single blow. Just imagine fighting somebody and this guy knows how to box, right? And you throw just throw punches and this guy's just straight up weaving, punching, weave, punch, weave, punch. That's exactly what Naruto would do. Naruto would just weave him by using his gentle fist to like redirect his blows and just land multiple blows on, on Kabuto, making it so easy to take him out. Seriously. I know you guys think that Naruto's copy ability is insane, but the craziest part of the dojutsu is honestly the future sight. I don't know if you guys noticed, but nobody has been able to land a single blow on Naruto up to this point. Regardless though, Naruto after defeating Kabuto would body flicker next to Jiraiya on top of Gamabunta and ask Orochimaru what he wants this time, staring at him with both the Byakugan and Sharingan in his eyes, causing Orochimaru to rush Naruto in an attempt to steal his body, but Naruto weaves and proceeds to shoot a wind bullet jutsu at Orochimaru that would send him flying, followed by a blast of a Madarasu. As in this moment, Orochimaru would barely dodge, like, like when I tell you guys barely dodge, I really, really mean it. And after Orochimaru realizes that Naruto just used an attack that Itachi actually has, Orochimaru would realize that this Naruto and the one that he fought in the forest, they're two different beasts. This Naruto didn't even pull, pull out all the stops yet and he now is able to do this to him? Orochimaru in this moment realizes that he's not going to be taking this guy's body. And so, he has to settle with Sasuke's body. For now. Eventually though, Naruto, Jiraiya, and Tsunade would return to the village, where upon arriving, Tsunade would immediately begin the process of healing Sasuke and Kakashi from the effects of Tsukiyomi, as well as any villagers injured on the attack on the leaf, and after that, she'd be made the fifth Hokage, as from here, we would get about two weeks of normality around the village, with Team 7 even going on a mission which, let's just say that during this mission, they fight this like really strong guy who was taking control of some village that was under attack or siege or something like that like just just take a, a naruto filler arc that happened uh put that in here and we're gonna say that naruto during this mission would end up absolutely wiping the floor with him in tandem with kakashi and sasuke would have kind of been like like just kind of quiet that whole time you know what i mean because of the fact that he feels some sort of way considering what itachi just did to him he's more like when he first lost his family Sasuke would be colder to the team, and this wouldn't go unnoticed by Naruto, who would try to point it out, but Sasuke would just ignore him, and eventually after this, the day would come where the Sound 4 would attack Sasuke, offering him power, with Sasuke this time around obviously accepting, and so he would leave the village and have the scene that we get with Sakura in the original canon, telling her that he's leaving now. So the following morning, the Sasuke retrieval arc would be, be would begin, right? And so Naruto and the original rookies would end up making their way towards Sasuke, like in the original. However, as soon as this mission would start, changes would begin to happen immediately, considering that the second they would run into the Sound 4, Naruto in the original and everybody else would be tr uh, caught by like this like sand dome jutsu that like would have you no know, like this dirt thing that like sucked out their chakra but naruto with his future sight would be able to see that jirobo was about to use that so he would react fast enough to dodge it and immediately place him under suki yomi as jirobo would straight up just fall to the ground completely knocked out bro's practically a vegetable at this point and the other members of the sound four would be shocked as immediately Two of them would try to face off against Naruto, but he would just be too dang strong, and in a flash, Naruto using a Chidori would take out two more of them, as Tayuya would have rushed off with Sasuke, getting way further ahead, and after this, after Naruto handled like the three Sand 4 members obviously, he would turn to, uh, to the team as he says he'll handle the rest, with Shikamaru looking at him and putting a hand on him saying that they're all here for the same goal, and just because he is the strongest, that doesn't mean he'll do everything alone. But Naruto would look at her, uh, Shikamaru and whisper under his breath, Yeah, well, just try to stop me. As he would create a massive sand dome around them, 
like 10 times stronger, bigger, and thicker than the one that Jirobo used. So they'd be stuck there, giving Naruto more than enough time to pursue Tayuya. However, in Tayuya's point of view, Sasuke would emerge laughing as the curse mark thing would have gone perfectly and Sasuke would begin running toward Orochimaru's base as Naruto would arrive to see Tayuya who would try to hold him off but Naruto's not playing any games and immediately he would shoot an Amaterasu blast at her burning her up as she would just begin screaming out in pain and Naruto would ignore her rushing towards the direction of Sasuke as from here Kimimaru would actually appear in front of him and would land an attack to Naruto's side or so it would look like until Naruto would show that there was bones there protecting him and Kimimaru would stare at it realizing this as Naruto smirks and and would say what's the matter you look like you've seen a ghost as in this moment Kimimaru would activate his Cursed Mark II state and would rush at Naruto with speed that would of course catch him off guard if not for his future sight as he would dodge out of the way and fight a sick Kimimaru beating him at his own game way too easily as Kimimaru would be taken care of and Naruto in this moment would learn Kimimaru's fighting style which goes perfectly with his bone kick and Genkai. However, eventually, Kimimaru would go into a stage 2 curse mark stage and Naruto would smirk saying thanks for the new move as he would activate it as well and absolutely curb stomp the sick Kimimaru who had no answer. Considering Kimimaru would practically have to fight a prime version of himself with his own fighting style who was 100% healthy. There is absolutely no answer Kimimaru is going to be giving to this. And after this, Naruto would begin to rush towards Sasuke, only to meet him at the Valley of the End, as he would yell out, Sasuke, stop running! And Sasuke would stop for a second, as Naruto looks at Sasuke and asks him, what in the world he thinks he's doing? As Sasuke tells him, I'm getting stronger, Naruto. But in this moment, Naruto would say, how? By going towards a lunatic who just wants your Sharingan? Sasuke, open your eyes! You can't learn anything from him! And Sasuke would scream out to Naruto saying, SHUT UP! As he goes in and punches Naruto in the face, but Naruto would stand still, saying that that weakling couldn't possibly teach him anything. Could he? As from here, Naruto would go on to send Sasuke back, with Sasuke saying it's not for him to decide that he wouldn't understand why he's doing this. He wasn't there that night, he didn't have to relive that a thousand times. And Naruto would get angry at Sasuke saying, if he thinks he had it hard, then he should try waking up every day not knowing if a villager would beat him half to death and wake up knowing everyone would be happier if he was gone. Sasuke, I don't know what you went through. I don't know what it was like to lose a family. But Sasuke, you're throwing away the new family you have in search of what? Revenge? Power? Wake up, Sasuke! But in this moment, Sasuke would break out into laughter before then saying, he should have just let Naruto die that day on the bridge, as that would really strike a nerve in Naruto, who would look at Sasuke and realize that Sasuke's over the edge. In this moment, Naruto would turn to him before then saying, that's fine, you won't be missed anyways, considering the village already has a better Sasuke, as he would transform into him using the transformation jutsu and mimic his voice. As in this moment, he would stare at him with his Sharingan active, causing Sasuke to activate his own and say, Don't mock me! As he kicks Naruto, but Naruto counters it perfectly, using Sasuke's own fighting style before then saying, <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better, in Sasuke's own voice. And immediately, Sasuke would activate his curse mark, saying, Try copying this! And Naruto would say, This? as he would activate it himself and immediately Sasuke would be shocked that Naruto was able to even copy his curse mark and he would step back in fear actually and it would be in this moment that Naruto would begin to finally begin fighting Sasuke. They're both going at it and Naruto's literally playing with his food, beating him down, showing absolutely no mercy. 
as Sasuke would be forced to go into his cursed Mark II state. However, Naruto would do so as well, catching Sasuke completely off guard, and Naruto would go on to completely embarrass Sasuke, letting blow after blow, slamming it into the mountain, slamming him into the water. Sasuke would swim out of it only to be hit by wind jutsus, water dragon jutsus, fire style jutsus, uh, shuriken jutsus, kunai. Sasuke would begin to getting beat down in every aspect as he shows Sasuke that he had lost from the start. And he would land the finishing blow to Sasuke, knocking him out as Naruto would put him on his shoulder and take him back to the Leaf Village, where Naruto would inform Tsunade of the status of the mission and would actually end up apologizing to his teammates, telling them that it was personal for him and he was tired of seeing Sasuke act like that. He needed to snap him out of it. After this, Naruto would then be forgiven by all the teammates who say, yeah, well, whatever, you made the mission easier for us, right? And after this, Naruto having nothing else to do would end up accepting to go on a three-year training journey with Jiraiya like in canon. However, unlike the original story, Naruto would return with well over 3,000 jutsus that he could whip out at any moment and so many more fighting styles. At this point, Naruto can now practically beat anyone not gonna lie, the Akatsuki are now fodder, considering they would have to beat a better version of themselves if they were to fight Naruto, and nobody wants to do that. Trust me, Naruto at this point would be a real copycat ninja. And you know how I said Naruto would piece up the Akatsuki? Well, that's because he already kinda did. During this three year journey, after the first year, Naruto would have practically learned everything he could have from Jiraiya, including Sage Mode, and they would have actually ended up going on a mission to straight up hunt the Akatsuki down. And one year into it, they would have ended up running into Kakazu and Hidan as their first targets, with Naruto easily being able to defeat Kakazu at his own game. And considering Kakazu doesn't have many jutsus to copy, Naruto would just absolutely embarrass him, using Kakazu's own jutsus but just way faster and way more powerful. And he would destroy each and every single one of Kakazu's hearts, making Kakazu literally scream out in terror before he landed that final blow. And it would be at this point that on the other side of things, Jiraiya would be absolutely destroying Hidan, who didn't allow him to get a single blow off, and he would get absolutely destroyed. I mean, what did you think was going to happen? And from here, I'm pretty sure you're thinking like, okay, okay, after this, we're going to go from, from a weakest to stronger Akatsuki members. Okay, Zether, we're, you know, the story's going to be a lot longer. No, no, you would think that it works like that, but no. Obito would actually end up pulling up on Naruto himself because of the fact that Naruto would become way too big of a target. And if he continues getting stronger, Obito fears he might not be able to take the tailed beast. But oh boy, could he have been could he have not been any more wrong considering he was already too late. Because the second that Obito would arrive using Kamui in front of Naruto, Naruto immediately would copy his Mangekyo abilities and from that point forward, it was wraps. Naruto at this point was able to go toe to toe with Obito, matching him in speed, strength, and Kamui usage. Naruto even would use Kamui in ways that Obito had never thought of using before and would absolutely be able to catch Obito off guard with everything that Obito tried doing. Obito had never had to fight somebody who he couldn't touch, and now he was getting a taste of his own medicine. But eventually, Naruto would begin getting serious, as he would begin throwing different jutsus and abilities in the Kamui dimension. He would create a thousand shadow clones in the real world, a thousand shadow clones in the Kamui dimension, and just throw so many elemental jutsus from every angle at the last spot that Obito was standing at, and Obito would have no answer, because he can't phase into the normal world and he can't phase into Kamui to avoid it. So Obito would literally get pieced up. Obito straight up dies, I mean there is no way to put it other than, imagine Obito fighting Obito, that's what happened, except the other Obito just so happened to have the abilities of practically every other ninja in the series. Oh. And did I mention, Naruto wasn't even trying, because if he really, really, really wanted to, he could have activated Sage Mode, KCM1 in that moment, heck, he could have even tapped into the fourth, the, 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 the eight inner gates, not all eight, but only till four, because that's all he's seen to this point, right? But, um, yeah, Naruto was, whew, oh man, it's, it's almost scary 
how powerful a ninja like this would be if there was like like just forget about the future site literally forget about that just the copy ability a ninja who could do everything you could do but better bro that it's too strong and from this point on i know some of you guys are like okay so we'll keep going who else does he beat but i'm not gonna lie that's it boys like from this point forward naruto's just gonna stomp everyone out and if you want to see that go watch one punch man but that's been it for me today if you guys hated the video leave a like if you loved it subscribe and if you're already subscribed well then pat yourself on the back because you earned it so with all that being said guys sorry for being gone for quite a bit like i said i was sick i was feeling bad and normally this video would have been edited however i wanted to focus more on the story aspect i wanted to get this out to you guys fast so i didn't edit it but if i did probably would have taken another week and a half to get this out to you guys so please for me boys leave a like on this video seeing as it helps to do so much better in the algorithm and with all that out of the way ladies and gentlemen i love you guys Peace.